Hello everybody, welcome to this very special isolation bonus episode of the Evolution of Horror. Uh, It's a very strange time right now. The likelihood is, if you're listening to this, you're probably at home, you're probably confined to your home for the foreseeable future, thanks to this horrible coronavirus. And uh, luckily, if you're anything like me, the one thing I found very helpful being isolated is just how many streaming platforms and TV channels we have access to these days. Uh, There is actually so much choice and there is so much stuff out there that I've never seen that I'm finally getting time to watch. However, the problem with this is that there is actually so much out there to watch that it's difficult trying to decide what and it's it's difficult trying to choose. So I thought what I'd do is bring you a little bonus episode in which I recommend to you some of my favourite horror movies that are streaming for you right now. Uh, So I'm going to just warn you that this is obviously going to be a little bit UK skewed. Okay, so if you're listening outside of the UK, I apologise if some of the films which I say are streaming on Netflix here might not be streaming in your country. Although the likelihood is, especially if you're listening in the US, if we have it, you probably also have it because we tend to have a much smaller selection of films than most other countries out there. Uh, So what I'm going to do is I'm going to recommend between five and ten horror films on four different streaming platforms. So I'm going to start by recommending some horror films on Netflix, then Amazon Prime. Prime, then Shudder, then Sky Movies, or Now TV, okay? These will all be spoiler-free recommendations, obviously. They're just going to be very brief. But hopefully, you'll get some new recommendations, you'll get some new films on your radar that you can check out during this strange, slightly laborious time, okay? Uh, So uh, I'm going to start with Netflix, okay? So I'm going to recommend a bunch of movies on Netflix. So I'm going to start with what's probably my favourite horror movie streaming on Netflix and one of my favourite horror movies of the last 10 years. And that is Karen Kusama's The Invitation from 2015. God, this thing is so official. Maybe they're overcompensating. It's kind of hard to call everybody up out of the blue after two years. I'm so glad you're here. We've got a lot to talk about. So much to celebrate tonight. Now, if you've listened to this podcast enough, you'll have probably heard me drone on about the invitation a few times, but I absolutely love it. And it feels like right now there is no film that will make you feel better about social distancing than this movie, because it is so much about social awkwardness and anxiety as much as it is a horror film. So the story is very simply, and I won't give away too much, but there is a guy at the center of the story played by Logan Marshall Green, who is on his way to his ex-girlfriend's house for a dinner party. Now he is going with his new girlfriend and his ex-girlfriend is also hosting this dinner party with her new husband. So there's a lot of kind of awkwardness from the start. And that's before this guy starts to realise that there is something very dark and sinister going on at this dinner party involving some of the guests. And it's certainly one of those kind of slow burn thrillers in which the anxiety and the tension and the dread slowly builds and builds and builds. That's one of my favourite types of horror movies to watch. And because it's a kind of a fairly low key piece, I mean, it's all set inside a house, mainly around a dinner table. uh, It means that it's quite a good film for you to watch at home on the small screen. Um, And it's very, very effective. So I would hugely recommend that. As I say, it's probably one of my favourite horror films that I ever discovered on Netflix. Um, I love it. Karen Kusama, who had previously directed films like Jennifer's Body, since then she's directed Destroyer with Nicole Kidman, and she's going to be directing the brand new Dracula movie. But she has an incredible eye for horror, and I think this is one of her best films to date. So that's The Invitation from 2015. That is streaming on Netflix. Okay, next up, I'm going to recommend a more recent film. It's actually only just popped onto Netflix, I think, in the last few weeks. And this is called The Girl on the Third Floor. This house has a history of bringing out the worst in people. Certainly creepy. What the hell is that? Promise me you won't say a word to Liz about last night. You need to get out of here. What was that? What? Hi, handsome. 
Now, The Girl on the Third Floor is a strange film, and it's certainly been one that has divided people, but I think it's worth you guys checking out, if anything, just so that we can all discuss it. I saw this at Fright Fest uh, 2019. Uh, it's directed by Travis Stevens, and also friend of the pod, Dan Martin, actually worked on the movie in, in some of these sort of practical effects. Um, it is, I guess, at the heart of it, a, a haunted house movie. Uh, it's about a guy who is um, about to move into a new house with his wife. He's moved there a couple of weeks earlier than her by himself so that he can renovate it and do it up before she arrives because she's heavily pregnant. So it's all about this guy who is away from his wife on his own doing up this house and all of a sudden this girl appears to him and stuff starts to kind of escalate from there and I think it's definitely one of those movies that deals with difficult characters to spend time with. This main central male character is horrible. He, he's the ultimate kind of toxic man. And I suppose it's debatable as to whether or not the film itself is misogynist or the film is about misogyny. Uh, that old chestnut. Anyway, it's a really interesting film. It's quite an icky film in a number of ways. It's got some really gross stuff bodily fluids and other such things <laughs> that's all i'll say and it's also got a few good scares um and yeah the jury's still out as to whether or not this film kind of achieves its goal in exploring some of the subject matter that i think it's trying to explore uh but i'd love to hear your thoughts on it so if that sounds interesting to you please do check it out that's the girl on the third floor from 2019 Another really interesting recent movie that also kind of deals with toxic masculinity in a different kind of way is Babak Anvari's Wounds. There was these college kids who left a cell phone there. And I went through it to see whose it was. You don't want to see it. You don't want to see it, it's awful. So this movie, also from 2019, it came straight onto Netflix last year. This is directed by Babak Anvari, who previously had directed the incredible Iranian ghost story Under the Shadow. Under the Shadow, FYI, is also streaming on Netflix. So if you haven't seen Under the Shadow, oh my God, go and check it out. It is a proper, classic, scary, haunted house movie, but against a kind of really interesting historical and political backdrop. There's kind of war-torn Tehran in the 1980s uh, and it's it's a fascinating movie so Under the Shadow also worth a watch this is Babak Anvari's first English language movie uh, he's got quite a big all-star cast here as well it stars Army Hammer Dakota Johnson Zazie Beats and a whole bunch of really interesting people and Rather than your classic ghost story, this time Babak has gone for something more psychological and certainly more gruey. He's he's gone for a kind of. I know that he was very influenced by both David Lynch and David Cronenberg in this movie. So, again, it's certainly one that divided people. This came out at London Film Festival last year and then dropped on Netflix, and a lot of people were very frustrated by the movie and were really put off by the ending. I personally absolutely love. It and I think the whole movie is held together beautifully by Army Hammer, who again plays a bit of a cunt to be honest, but a really interesting one. Uh, and again, I think if you're happy to go on this journey with this quite unlikable main character, then you will really enjoy this ride. And I don't want to give away too much more, but if you're a fan of slightly more off kilter stuff, nastier, gruier, sort of body horror type stuff. It's quite a scuzzy movie. That's the word I would use to describe Wounds. Uh, then I would definitely check it out. So that's Wounds from 2019. Okay, another two movies I'm going to recommend back to back because they're both brilliant and they should both be seen one after the other. They were both released straight to Netflix and they are both perfect movies to watch at home. I am talking about the Mark Duplass films Creep and Creep 2. Oh my God. Oh my God. This is going to be a good day. So the reason I've hired you is because I have terminal brain cancer. And I want you to film me to make a video diary for my unborn son. You ready for this? Okay. 
Uh, these movies are absolutely fascinating. So the setup for Creep 1 from 2014 is about a guy called Aaron who answers an online ad and drives to a stranger's house to film him for the day. This man, plays by Mark Duplass, wants to make a movie for his unborn child before he dies. But this day that they spend together becomes more and more bizarre. Uh, and that's all I will say. So the whole film is, it, it's kind of done in the found footage way. So we are seeing the film that this guy is making as he films the two of them spend this day together. Uh, and from the very beginning, you don't quite know whether to trust Mark Duplass. Is he just this very vulnerable, very sick man? Or is he actually, as the title suggests, a bit of a creep? Uh, it's wonderful. Another kind of really character-driven slow burn piece and it builds and it builds and it builds and it's got a cracker of an ending. Then, as soon as Creep 1 has finished, put on Creep 2 because it's just as good. These two are fantastic little movies to watch back to back. I won't tell you anything about what happens in Creep 2, but I think they are both a brilliant little double bill. Uh, if you're a fan of found footage, then definitely check out Creep. They're also very funny as well as being very dark i'm a big big fan so that's creep from 2014 and creep 2 from 2017 Okay, maybe you want to watch something that's a little bit more cinematic, something that's a bit more visual, because a lot of these movies I've been talking about have been very much kind of chamber pieces. They've been quite low-key, mainly character-driven. Now, there was one incredible sci-fi horror movie from a couple of years ago that, for some baffling reason, didn't get a theatrical release, and it was released straight onto Netflix, which was an oversight. However, it doesn't mean that it's not going to be incredible to watch at home on your TV, and and that is Alex Garland's Annihilation from 2018. Oh man, Annihilation. This is one of the most bonkers and brilliant cosmic horror films I have ever seen. If you're a fan of movies like uh, Color Out of Space, which came out this year, or any of that kind of Lovecraftian cosmic horror, then Annihilation is certainly the film for you. Uh, this has got a brilliant all-star cast, including Natalie Portman, Oscar Isaac, Jennifer Jason Lee, and it is about these women, these scientists who venture into this strange place i believe it's called the shimmer uh in order to investigate it and it's kind of this trek through this kind of magical world full of these very beautiful but very dangerous uh sort of creatures and particularly if you're a fan of yeah the more sci-fi horror the more action horror but also stuff that is very kind of out there and ideas based <clears throat> Annihilation is fascinating and brilliant it's also got one of the best monster sort of creature designs in a film that I've seen in years and years and years uh, if you've seen the film you know exactly which monster I'm talking about but there is one set piece involving a monster inside a house which is absolutely terrifying and haunted my nightmares <laughs> It just, and the film looks absolutely stunning. Uh, Alex Garland, of course, previously had directed uh, the sci-fi film Ex Machina, which again is a really interesting film uh, and it's kind of got some really interesting ideas at the heart of it. Now with this film, he's been able to go a bit bigger and a bit more visual, um, but he's still got some of those really interesting sci-fi concepts and ideas at the centre of this movie. So not only is it a great visual feast, not only is it a great horror film, a great creature feature, but it's also a really clever and smart sort of mind fuck sci-fi film so this movie ticks a lot of those boxes and it's got a beautiful and haunting score as well so if you haven't seen annihilation i cannot recommend it enough check that out immediately that's annihilation from 2018 Okay, for my next pick, we're going to go over to Korea. Now, one of the things that you've got right now, if you're 
in isolation is you've got plenty and plenty of time to spare. You've got plenty of hours. And actually, I find when I've got time to kill, this is the only time when I can really tolerate a long film. Uh, Actually, just last week, FYI, uh, I watched Doctor Sleep, the director's cut, which is three hours long, Mike Flanagan's director's cut. And it was absolutely phenomenal. And I think at times like this, when there's not much else to do, I'm really up for watching a long film. So the next film I'm going to recommend is, I believe, close to three hours in its running time. It is an absolute horror epic from South Korea, and it's called The Wailing. Now, The Wailing, if this doesn't sound a little too close to home, starts off seeming like a kind of pandemic movie. But then it slowly kind of evolves to become something else and then something else and then something else. And it's impossible to kind of categorize this movie. I believe that me and Stevie Webb talked about it in our folk horror also rants because it does have an element of folk horror to it. It's rural. It's set in this kind of remote village about some of these strange things and strange rituals going on in this village. However, there's so much other stuff. It's also kind of a zombie film. It's also kind of a serial killer film and the movie kind of seamlessly moves from one subgenre to the next. I mean it's actually an occult film as well in fact so it could have been covered in any number of the series that I've I've done on the podcast. Um, Again I don't want to give away too much but in that brilliant kind of South Korean cinema way it juggles tones and genres seamlessly. It's funny one moment, it's tragic and tear jerking the next it's terrifying the next uh it's got a brilliant kind of comical and warm and lovable uh, main protagonist at the center of it and it's also got this just one of the best and most intense kind of exorcism scenes that i've ever seen in a film and again if you've seen the movie you know what i'm talking about but there is a kind of centerpiece of the movie that is just mind-blowingly good. Uh, I love this film, and right now, if you've got the time to really escape and immerse yourself in a long, epic film, I would recommend The Wailing. It's absolutely wonderful. So that is The Wailing from 2015. Okay, next I'm going to go to a much smaller film, a film that is almost, you could think of it as a kind of Black Mirror episode. Uh, It's much, much shorter, and it's much more contained. This is Cam from 2018. Hey, I have a new friend. That person is not me. She looks exactly like you. Weird. Who is she? Unexpected things happen to test us. It isn't safe. What is it? I've watched enough to guess who it'll choose. But I don't know what it is. You stole my face and now I'm going to get it back. You stole my face and now I'm going to get it back. Uh, Now, me and Brad Hansen talked about Cam, I believe, in our London Film Festival coverage, but this is a brilliant film about a Cam girl. Uh, So she sort of performs for men online. Uh, She's got lots of her followers. And then suddenly somebody starts to mess with her online. And I won't give away too much more than that, but it's a really interesting film. It's written by Issa Maze, who I believe she was a Cam girl before actually writing this film. So a lot of it is based on her own experiences of working in this world. And I think that's why it feels like it's got a real authentic and also kind of loving look as well as kind of a dangerous look at this world. Um, It's quite sex positive and it's quite progressive in a lot of the things it's doing. But it's also, don't get me wrong, a horror film about the dangers of the internet. So it's brilliant. It's a really great film to watch on your laptop at home or even on your TV. But it's it's a smaller film, you know, it's kind of more in the in the vein of watching a paranormal activity or unfriended or one of those types of movies. Uh, It's got a brilliant performance from Madeline Brewer at the center of it. And it's a film that had lots and lots of twists and kept me guessing all the way till the end. So that's Cam from 2018. 
Okay, before I finish on Netflix, I'm going to recommend a few other bigger movies that you may have seen before, you may not have seen before, you may not be aware are streaming on Netflix. So for example, It Chapter One is now streaming on Netflix. So if you still haven't had the chance to watch the new It film from 2017, give it a watch. It's great. It's obviously the first half of the double bill of films, and it's about when all of the main characters were kids, and it's set in the 80s. Uh, It's got a real kind of Stranger Things vibe. And, of course, we've got Bill Skarsgård playing Pennywise the Clown. It's a really slick, really stylish version uh, of that story. I'm a big fan. That's It Chapter One. That's also available on Netflix. Uh, John Krasinski's A Quiet Place. Now, of course, A Quiet Place 2 was supposed to be out in cinemas right now. It's been pushed back. Um, uh, I don't think we actually have a confirmed release date for it now. But if you never got the chance to see A Quiet Place... Oh my God, it's one of the most tense movie watching experiences I've had. It's now on Netflix. If you haven't seen it, please, please, please check that out. Uh, There are also some really great Blumhouse films uh, available for streaming on Netflix right now. Uh, Insidious. Sometimes you just want to watch a really good, jumpy, haunted house movie. And that is what Insidious is, except it's kind of that with a twist. If you haven't seen Insidious... I'd be surprised if you haven't, but if you haven't seen it, I won't reveal too much except that it it stars Patrick Wilson, a little bit like The Conjuring, and it sets itself up as your classic haunted house Amateurville-esque movie. A family moved to a home with kids, strange things start happening, bumps in the night, etc., It's directed really well. James Wan, of course, so there are loads of jump scares. It also goes in a bit of a different direction, particularly in the final act, which some people really didn't like. I personally really liked. I thought it was quite interesting and bold and fun. It's a really fun film as well. So if you want to watch something that is just quite easygoing and is full of laughs and jumps and is a bit of a roller coaster ride, check out Insidious. Speaking of, another great Blumhouse film also streaming on Netflix is The Purge, the original The Purge. Um, again, a great film to watch whilst in isolation. This is about a family who isolate themselves in their house on Purge Night, and I guess it's kind of a home invasion movie uh, starring Ethan Hawke, but it's great. It's very controlled. It's very stripped back. The first Purge movie is actually very different to all of these sequels. If you haven't seen it, give it a watch. It's a dark and disturbing idea, and it's a really fun movie to watch. Uh, Also, Happy Death Day. I mean, again, who doesn't love Happy Death Day? If you haven't seen Happy Death Day, this is kind of Groundhog Day meets Scream, uh, a kind of slasher film in which a a final girl is forced to live out uh, this day in which she is stalked and killed over and over and over again. Uh, It's a great idea and it's really, really fun. So those are a few other kind of more well-known Blumhouse movies that are also available for streaming on Netflix. And I'm going to finish my Netflix list by recommending Ending some stuff by the king of Netflix horror, Mike Flanagan. Mike Flanagan uh, really made a name for himself directing kind of small screen horror movies that went onto streaming platforms. Uh, one of my favourites is Gerald's Game. This is a Stephen King adaptation about a woman who is basically tied to a bed on her own for an entire film. It is really scary, really disturbing, and it has got some of the grossest gore I have ever seen in a film. Uh, That's Gerald's Game. And then the other Mike Flanagan recommendation I've got to give you all is probably my favourite horror television show of all time, and that is The Haunting of Hill House. If you haven't seen The Haunting of Hill House, there is no better time to sit and binge watch this program. I mean, even if you have seen it, watch it again, because it's so fucking good. Um, Mike Flanagan obviously gives us here an adaptation of Shelley Jackson's novel, but he takes it in new, interesting directions. He manages to sustain a kind of horror movie atmosphere through an entire miniseries, which is really difficult to do. Just ask Ryan Murphy. And it manages to balance kind of heart and character work with jump scares and sort of creeping dread. 
it's wonderful. The Haunting of Hill House, one of the best things you can watch on Netflix right now. So there you go. That is everything that's out there on Netflix. Now, of course, there's a lot on Netflix. So that was a slightly longer list. I'm going to try and rattle through uh, the rest of my recommendations on other streaming platforms. So let's move on to Amazon Prime. So here are some of my personal picks uh, for horror recommendations on Amazon Prime. First of all, I'm going to kick off with another quite divisive movie. This is Luca Guadagnino's Suspiria from 2018. When you dance the dance of another, you make yourself in the image of its creator. I feel like I'm not even here yet. <laughs> the dumplings incredible. One, two, three. The way she transmits her work. You have to decide what is it you want to be for this company. There's more in that building than what you can see, Doctor. You are living with dangerous people. It's a strange old film, and of course you can listen to me and Anna Bogotskaya talk about the movie in depth. We did an episode all about it. Uh, it is, of course, a remake of the Dario Argento film, but really it's nothing like the Dario Argento film. It's about an hour longer, and there's a lot more stuff that Guadagnino is trying to tackle and wrestle with in this film. And it's got a lot of gumph. I'll be honest, but it's also got some really great stuff as well. He really kind of doubles down on the dance school setting of this story, which, you know, Argento was never really that interested in the dancing in the original. Whereas in this version, Luca Guadagnino really does use dance as part of the horror. And there are some absolutely incredible set pieces. So Suspiria from 2018, if you haven't had a chance to watch that yet, it's on Amazon Prime right now. Go and check it out. Okay, my next recommendation for Amazon Prime is Goodnight Mummy from 2014. Mama? Goodnight Mummy is a really creepy film. This is made by Veronica Franz and Severin Fiala, and they, uh, a pair of really interesting writer-directors, uh, they have just made their first English-language horror film called The Lodge, which was absolutely terrifying, and it's still not got a release date here in the UK, but keep an eye out for it. But Goodnight Mummy, it tackled a lot of the same themes as The Lodge. It's about a woman who has two sons, and the setup of the film is she has just come back from having facial surgery and her face is covered in bandages. The little boys, her two sons, start to realise that their mother is not acting herself. She's acting very strangely and they start to suspect that perhaps this woman under these bandages isn't their mother. And that is all I will say for now. But oh my God, it is a very creepy and deeply disturbing movie. That's called Goodnight Mummy from 2014. Please check it out. Uh, another big recommendation I've got to I've got to talk about. I mean, was there ever a more relevant film to talk about right now than Danny Boyle's 28 Days Later? Uh, I'm sure you all know about 28 Days Later. If for some insane reason you fancy sticking that on right now and watching it, it is available on Amazon Prime. No! Uh, next, I'm going to go to a bit more of a classic ghost story, one that you may not have seen. Uh, this is a Thai West film from a few years ago called The Innkeepers. Do you know the story of Madeline O'Malley? She was the woman that died here in the hotel. She hung herself after her fiancé stood her up on their wedding day. And ever since then, people have reported seeing the ghost of Madeline O'Malley roaming the hallways waiting for her lover. Some say she's even looking to take up a new one. This is our last weekend open, so we've got to find some proof that my little Mally really exists before this place closes down. I have my microphone so we can make do with EVP investigations. Yes, I like a room for the night. Since the hotel is practically empty, we might have a good chance of making some real contact. What was that? 
The Innkeepers is a classic stripped back haunted house movie about a guy and a girl who work together in this hotel and creepy stuff starts to happen. It's got shining vibes. It's got kind of Amateurville vibes. Um, it's got creeping dread. It's got jump scares. It's got two really fun, lovable characters at the heart of it. Um, I obviously just covered recently Ty West's House of the Devil from 2010. This was his next movie and he went for a much more kind of low key haunted house vibe for this one and i love it so if you haven't seen it yet this is your chance i mean there's no better time than to curl up at home turn out all the lights and watch a haunted house movie so the innkeepers is one of the best Next up, I'm going to recommend a bit more of an old classic. Now, I know a lot of people out there really love anthology horror films, the kind of portmanteaus. One of my favourites is from 1965, and it's called Dr. Terror's House of Horrors. The terrifying horror of a dreaded man called Dr. Terror, who, with his deck of mystic cards, could foretell destiny. Dr. Terror's House of Horrors. Uh, Dr. Terror's House of Horrors is an amicus movie uh, and it it is a portmanteau. Uh, It's five chilling stories that are linked by the character of a strange fortune-telling doctor who predicts the bizarre deaths of five fellow passengers on a train using a pack of tarot cards. Uh, It stars Peter Cushing, Christopher Lee, Donald Sutherland, Roy Castle, an incredible cast um, of actors. Five really fun, really creepy stories Again, if you just want to watch something that is a bit more, you can just relax, maybe watch it in sections. You can watch this one in sections. It's a portmanteau. Uh, It's really, really fun and really worth a watch. That's Dr. Terror's House of Horrors from 1965. That's available on Amazon Prime. A few big, big movies that are available on Amazon Prime. For example, Alien from 1979. The Thing from 1982. It Follows from 2014. Uh, These movies are all available on Prime. So if you fancy giving any of those a watch for the first time, maybe, or a rewatch, you can. Check them out. I mean, The Thing, again... I always find The Thing is a great movie to watch on a long, cold winter's night, you know. And again, it feels like there's no better time than to curl up on the sofa, close the curtains, turn out the lights and watch The Thing. Uh, One of the greatest horror movies ever made. Uh, Interestingly, this week marks the 20th anniversary of the release of teen slasher classic Final Destination. The flag explodes! It's not a joke! It's not a joke! We get thrown off the plane all because Brownie has a bad dream? I saw it. The plane! It's gonna blow up! It's gonna blow up! Final Destination is streaming on Amazon Prime. Now, actually, when it comes to kind of horror franchises and slasher franchises, Final Destination is one of my absolute favourites. All of the sequels are really, really fun. There are five movies altogether. In fact, I would say some of the sequels are better than the original. I think two is is my favourite of the whole bunch, but I also love Final Destination 5. But the original is an absolute classic, starring Devon Sowa, Sean William Scott, uh, the great Tony Todd. There are a whole bunch of great people. There are a whole bunch of really great nasty grisly uh, death set pieces and it's a really great film to revisit on its 20th anniversary so final destination the original is streaming on amazon prime right now okay i'm gonna move on now to shudder So obviously Shudder, a streaming service designed entirely for horror films. So there is a little too much to recommend when it comes to Shudder, but I am just going to pick out a few of my personal favourites. Now, just a little tidbit, Shudder are actually offering a free month of streaming to everyone right now. God bless them. Uh, I think you can sign up with the code SHUTIN, all one word, and you will get yourself a free month. So try it out right now, Shudder UK, and use the code SHUTIN in. So here are a few of my favourite horror films streaming on Shudder right now. First of all, I'm going to start with uh, talking about J-horror because I've discovered that it's got a really good selection of J-horrors. Shudder obviously has Ring, Ringu, the original, the classic, the quintessential J-horror movie. If you haven't seen it by some slim chance, 
oh my god check it out it's fucking terrifying and if you've only seen the american version please do check out the original it's much much scarier but we've also got dark water streaming on amazon prime that is a really underrated j horror uh, it's a little bit more sort of melancholy uh, but it's just as creepy and it has got just as terrifying an ending and not only that one of the best one of the very very best j horror movies pulse is also streaming on shudder that oh my god is one of the scariest movies I've ever seen. And actually, I really feel the need to revisit Pulse, so I think I am going to give that a watch tonight. Uh, If you are a fan of podcasts such as this that explore the history of the horror genre, then there are a couple of really good documentaries on Shudder about horror movies. There is Eli Roth's uh, series, The History of Horror, which is great. Uh, And there's also a really fascinating feature documentary called Horror Noir, uh, which is kind of, which explores the kind of representation of African Americans in the horror genre and they go all the way back to the sort of 30s when we had films like uh, voodoo zombie movies all the way through to the works of Jordan Peele and they look at the way in which black characters have been portrayed Uh, it's it's a fascinating film with loads of fascinating contributors and interviews I loved it Uh, I think everyone any horror fan and even non-horror fans would really love that documentary that's called Horror Noir and that is streaming on Shudder right now Another favourite of mine, which I'm going to be covering in my next series of the podcast, is Takashi Miike's Audition from 1999. This movie fucks me up. Uh, so this is another Japanese uh, film and it's very strange it's very unusual it starts off almost seeming like a romance uh, about a guy who holds kind of fake auditions uh, looking for actresses but really he's looking for a girlfriend he meets this really really sweet young lady and the two of them hit it off and they start dating and everything seems to be going really well until it doesn't and the final act of this film contains some of the most disturbing and grisly and nasty and terrifying images I've seen in cinema. I absolutely love it. I won't say any more than that, but it's called Audition from 1999. If you haven't seen it, fucking hell, you're in for a treat. Uh, Okay, another one that I feel like doesn't get talked about enough. Um, One of my favourite and scariest horror films that I've seen in recent years is a movie called Stillborn. situation where the mother has lost a child it can put her in a state of perpetual fear where you have the fear that you're going to lose the other child a young married couple they're pregnant the wife at the beginning of the movie is giving birth to twins one of the twins survives and one of them sadly is stillborn cut to some time later the mother is now looking after her baby at home and suddenly she starts hearing noises on the baby monitor of a second baby um, and that's all I'll say uh, things get really really fucking creepy and like some of the best ghost stories it's kind of psychological as much as it is supernatural is this woman still suffering from some kind of post-traumatic stress or postpartum depression uh, is there something really creepy and supernatural going on here is there a demonic baby upstairs etc you get all of the most classic kind of scares you, that you get in these types of movies noises on baby baby monitors, creaky floorboards, jump scares, but it's really fucking scary. I remember watching it at Fright Fest and actually at one point thinking, I'm not sure how much longer I can sit 
and watch this because it was so tense I was gripping the side of my seat throughout. So if you like movies that are those classic kind of jump scare fests, Stillborn is absolutely one of the best. Okay, moving on to something a little bit more emotional. Uh, This is a film from a couple of years ago called Tigers Are Not Afraid. So Tigers Are Not Afraid also premiered at Fright Fest a couple of years ago and it was so many people's favourites. It's a really moving and beautiful movie directed by Issa Lopez. It's a Mexican film and if you like movies like Guillermo del Toro's Pan's Labyrinth then this movie is very much for you. Um, It is the story of these kids, these kind of gang of street children. Most of them are orphans and it's about them kind of dealing with the horrors of the real world world but told in this kind of fantastical way uh, it's really sweet it's really fun it's exciting it's scary but it's also really moving um, it's a beautiful film I mean it's a genuinely legit beautiful masterpiece of a film and not enough people have seen it um, that kind of it's got that kind of haunting fairy tale vibe um, imagine City of God if Guillermo del Toro had directed it um, it's wonderful Everyone who has ever seen it has loved it. And if you haven't seen it yet, please do give it a watch. It's called Tigers Are Not Afraid, and that's available on Shudder. Uh, okay, just a couple more recommendations. There's another movie that I saw at Fright Fest a couple of years ago, uh, which is now streaming on Shudder, called terrified uh, now this is not to be confused with terrifier which is the film about art the clown which is pretty horrible this is not that this is an argentinian film uh, a kind of ghost movie i suppose or a sort of creature feature uh, about these kind of monsters that live inside this house and live in the walls it's a bit of a bonkers story but it has got some of the most effective scares that i've seen in a horror film in a number of years so So again, if you want to watch something that's a little bit unusual, a little bit unconventional, but again, a really interesting kind of original creature design and some really, you know, legit scares, then I would definitely check out Terrified. It's a great movie to watch at night on your own in the house. Uh, Just be warned, it is scary. Uh, And I can't resist recommending one of my all-time favourite horror films, one of the best haunted house movies ever made, and that's The Changeling from 1980. That is also streaming on Shudder. How did you die? Father, father, farewell. If you haven't seen The Changeling, go and watch it immediately. It is one of the greatest horror films ever made. It's definitely one of the best haunted house movies ever made. Uh, This stars George C. Scott, uh, who suffers a tragedy at the beginning of the film. He loses his whole family in a car accident, and he moves to this big old mansion by himself. And, of course, strange, dark things start to happen. It's got some absolute iconic scares in it that many people have seen, even if they haven't seen the film, such as the Red ball bouncing down the stairs but there's a whole bunch of other stuff uh, that is so creepy and so tense but it's also really emotional like all of the best ghost stories are I absolutely love it. I can watch this film over and over and over again. It is beautifully made, beautifully written, and such a stunning performance from George C. Scott. It's a really mature film as well. I love it. That is The Changeling from 1980. And my final recommendation for Shudder, if you fancy something that's a bit more gruey and maybe something that's a bit more relevant to what's going on right now, uh, you could also check out The Bay. Good morning, Marilyn. I am in Claridge, the host of our annual July 4th party. Oh my god! This is the CDC. We're in the middle of some kind of viral outbreak. It's eating their organs, intestines, liver, it goes for kidneys. 
there's something wrong with the water. This stuff. The Bay is a kind of mockumentary found footage film uh, about a little town in America that is located on a bay and this weird kind of sea creature parasite that gets into the water and infects all of the residents. So it's a kind of body horror pandemic film and it's really, really horrible. Um, If you don't like kind of squelchy, squeamish body horror, then you're not going to like this. But it's a really effective horror film it may be a bit scary to watch right now considering what's going on in the world but also if you fancy that then give it a go Uh, that is the bay from 2012 and there we go i'm going to finish up now with a few recommendations on now tv uh, or sky cinema they're the same thing so whichever one you subscribe to you should have access to the following horror movies so these are my favorites that are streaming right now on sky cinema and now tv Uh, i'm going to recommend another lee one l film just because I love Lee Whannell and I know that everyone is very excited right now about films like The Invisible Man so Upgrade, Upgrade is a fantastic little sci-fi horror that he made a couple of years ago, that's streaming right now on Sky Movies and Now TV I am STEM, the system operating your body for you Can anybody else hear you? No, only you May I point something out? In the drone surveillance footage Sir Brantner, Marine Corps, address 414 Citrus, New Ground. We'll need a plan. I got this. This doesn't seem like a well thought out plan. Uh, It stars Logan Marshall Green about a guy who literally gets an upgrade. He gets this chip in his head that helps his kind of motor reflexes and that kind of thing. But it being a sci fi horror, things start to go wrong it's a great film and it's got some incredible action sequences as well so please do check that out if you want to watch something a bit weirder one of my favorite films from the last couple of years was peter strickland's in fabric a purchase on a horizon i'm just looking thank you the hesitation in your voice soon to be an echo in the recesses of the spheres of retail So if you listen to this podcast, you probably have heard me drone on about this quite a lot. I absolutely adore this film. Peter Strickland, who had previously made films like Barbarian Sound Studio, made this film in fabric about a killer red dress. Uh, It's truly unique. There is nothing else like this film. It's bonkers. It's hilarious. It's creepy. uh, It's beautiful. I love it. Um, I've watched it, I think, three times since it was released uh, a couple of years ago. It's one of my absolute all-time favourites. That is also streaming for free right now on Now TV. That's in fabric. Uh, another great little film that's streaming right now on Now TV is called I Trapped the Devil. Uh, this was another one that saw its premiere at Fright Fest last year. So we talked about it very briefly on our Fright Fest coverage. Uh, this is a film directed by Josh Lobo. It's a really lovely little horror film about a guy who claims that he has trapped the devil in his base when his family come and visit him at Christmas they start to worry that obviously this guy has actually just lost his mind and has just trapped this innocent stranger in his basement Uh, and uh, the film then kind of goes from there and explores what's real what isn't who's mad who's sane great little film it would work really well as a kind of twilight zone episode but it also works beautifully as a kind of haunting creepy christmas horror film so that's i trapped the devil and that's streaming on now tv if you want to watch something that really really nails the time we live in you could watch assassination nation that's also streaming right now on now tv this is a film about how in the words of the main character uh, the town of salem lost its fucking mind My name is Lily Coulson, and I'm 18 years old. These are my three best friends, Em, Bex, and Sarah. And this is the story of how my town, Salem, lost its mind. Um, It's not about the witch trials. It is very much set in the present day, and it's about the dangers of social media, mobile phones, data protection, and the way in which 
if our secrets got out just how much this could fuck up the world essentially uh, it kind of works a little bit like a kind of purge origin story it's a really chilling really nasty quite mean-spirited movie but i absolutely love it that's assassination nation Uh, Another interesting movie streaming right now on Now TV is An Incident in a Ghostland. Now, this is a movie from director Pascal Logia, who directed Martyrs. Uh, So you know the type of film he's capable of making. This is another similarly very disturbing movie. It's one that a lot of people really hated, um, which kind of weirdly tries to kind of merge that kind of horrible French extremity that we saw in Martyrs with something more Lovecraftian. And it's a bit of a jarring mix, but I personally loved the film. There are certain elements of it that are very problematic, but say what you like about Pascal Logier, he is really incredible at directing and staging truly horrific, scary content. Uh, There are some absolutely terrifying moments in this film um, that really stayed with me. So yeah, if you have got a bit more of a strong stomach and you want to watch something a little bit more hardcore, a bit more disturbing, check out An Incident in a Ghost Land. Whether you love it or hate it, it will definitely leave an impression. Uh, I'm also going to recommend one of my favourite sci-fi horror movies, Event Horizon. That is also available on Now TV. Uh, This is a wonderful film. It's batshit, it's bonkers, it's kind of stupid, but it's so much fun. Uh, Obviously, this is the Paul W.S. Anderson film from the 90s. It stars Sam Neill, Lawrence Fishburne, Jolie Richardson, a whole bunch of other people that you'd probably recognise. It is this kind of strange Lovecraftian cosmic horror about people in this ship who are kind of able to sort of travel through into this other kind of hell dimension and the madness and the kind of horror that that causes. Um, It's certainly not going to win any Oscars for writing or anything like that, but it's a really fun movie with actually some really interesting ideas at the centre of it. Um, It's just debatable as to whether or not they're executed that well, but I love it. I think it's really great, really fun, quite exciting, quite scary. That is Event Horizon. That's also a Available on Now TV. Uh, just a quick note to say that also on Now TV, you can pretty much stream all of the Friday the 13th movies. I think they've got every single one, at least the first eight. Uh, so if you haven't, for some reason, seen the Friday the 13th films, now's your chance. You could binge watch all of them. Check them out on Now TV. Uh, I love the first one, of course, and then I love uh, part four, and I love part six. So if you just were looking for specific recommendations from the series, I'd go one, four, six, and then maybe eight Jason Takes Manhattan uh, classics. So that's Friday the 13th. They are also available on Now TV. And I'm going to finish by recommending another kind of horror comedy classic from the last couple of years. In fact, I think this was last year. This is a very recent film. Uh, We covered it very briefly in our London Film Festival coverage last year. This is a great little zombie movie starring Lupita Nyong'o, and it's called Little Monsters. Super fun time on our trip. I want you all in the line in front of me and away we go. Why are we stopping? There must be something in the way. What is it, Miss Caroline? Uh, Little Monsters is a gorgeous Australian film uh, about a school trip that happens in the middle of a zombie apocalypse and the way in which this primary school teacher, played by Lupita Nyong'o, has to kind of keep the kids safe and also keep them oblivious to all of the horrors that are happening around them. Uh, It's wonderful. It's a really kind of clever mix of comedy and pathos and horror. Uh, Lupita Nyong'o is just wonderful and mesmerizing. And it's a really, really fun film. It's also got Josh Gad in uh, a role that you've never seen him play before. Um, And it's just got some great comic performances and some great zombie grooviness in there as well. So it's well worth a watch. If you want something a little bit more fun and if you like zombie movies, Little Monsters is one of the better zombie movies of the last few years. That's also streaming on Now TV. And I'm going to finish with a modern masterpiece. Speaking of Lupita Nyong'o, if you've got Now TV or 
Sky Cinema, you can also stream Jordan Peele's Us. So for those few of you, and I'm sure there are very few of you who haven't seen Us, you can watch it if you've got Now TV, and it's well worth a watch. It's a really scary film, actually, um, but it's got Jordan Peele's brilliant kind of clever writing that kind of provides social commentary as well as wit, as well as interesting characters. Uh, at the centre of it, you've got Le- Lupita Nyong'o playing two roles, uh, and if you don't know anything about the film, I won't say why, but it's got some outstanding set pieces it's got a great soundtrack it's got a great opening scene um and it's got a really interesting and weird ending again that kind of divides people but it's not as kind of beautifully simple and satisfying as get out as a film it's a little bit more sprawling it's a little bit more ambitious but because of that i've been much more tempted to revisit us over and over again and even though i still think it's flawed in some ways i kind of love it and i respect it for what it's doing And I just, I think Jordan Peele is one of our great horror filmmakers working right now. So that is Jordan Peele's Us, and that is also available on Now TV. And there we go. That is all of the recommendations I have time to give you right now. Now, of course, we've only really scratched the surface of what horror films are available on all these streaming platforms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue releasing bonus episodes over on Patreon in the next few weeks. I'm going to try and do maybe one a week, maybe even more than one a week, in which I recommend a new batch of horror films streaming on different streaming platforms. So if you're on Patreon, you will get access to that as as soon as it's out and if you want to sign up to patreon then please do get involved for the very reasonable price of five dollars per month you will get access to weekly bonus content and it may even be more than just one episode per week over the next few weeks as isolation kicks in so head on over to patreon.com slash evolution of horror and i will keep bringing patrons bonus mini episodes in which i recommend different horror films streaming right now thank you so much for listening and join us again very soon for all of this and more on the evolution of horror.